Hello everyone, this is Mirzai from Cal Poly Pomona and in this lesson we are going to cover k-mean clustering which is a method for unsupervised learning. So k-mean clustering is a method or algorithm to group or cluster n observations based on their features or attributes into k groups or partitions where the number of groups is less than the number of observations. Before we start uh, going over k-mean clustering, I would like to review the four methods that we introduced for calculation of distance between clusters. If I want to calculate the distance between two clusters, the simplest way is to look at the closest observation from the two clusters and consider that as the measure of distance between the two clusters. That's what is called single linkage. If I look at the farthest point of the two clusters and consider that as a measure of distance between the two clusters, then we call it complete linkage. If I calculate all the pair distances between the pair of observation in the first and second cluster and then take the average of all these distances, we call it average linkage. And if I consider the centroid for each of these groups and then calculate the distance between the centroids as the measure of distance between the two clusters, then we call it average group linkage. Also, another important uh, topic to review is uh, the way that we calculate the distance between observations. If I have two observations, there are two methods that I can calculate the distance between the two observations. Suppose that the two observations are represented as u and v. Uh, we show them as a vector u and vector v. If I want to calculate the distance between these two vectors, one simple way is the Euclidean distance, which takes the summation of the squared of the differences between each pair uh, of the elements of the two vectors, as shown below here. Another measure of distance between the two vectors could be looking at the rectilinear distance between the two observations, which is basically this time, instead of the sum of the squared differences, we simply take the sum of the absolute differences between the, the observations in each of these uh, vectors. So this equation is uh, presented here. To see the application of rectilinear distances in the example that we covered today we're gonna use rectilinear distances and you get a chance to see how we can use it for calculation of distance between observations. So let's look at one example and explain k-mean clustering with an example so that it's uh, easier and more intuitive for us to understand. Suppose you have a two-dimensional uh, set of uh, points so you have eight points and all of them are two-dimensional. It means that it's in an xy axis. So you have all these uh, information here and you would like to cluster them in three groups. So one of the criteria or one of the parameter of k-mean clustering is number k. k refers to the number of groups. Despite the hierarchical clustering that we saw earlier where the number of groups were not identified or determined before the clustering, in k-mean clustering you have to know what k or the number of groups are. In this case the number of groups are three or we want to, to cluster the data points in three distinct groups. To start the k-mean clustering we have to have a center for each of these clusters. It means that since k is equal to three I have to identify three center points for these clusters. Now the question is how we define those center, center points. Sometimes we can pick three points randomly from the set of the points that we have available as the initial centers, but they don't have to be necessarily among the data points or observations that you have. In this case, I'm going to choose three points from the data set randomly as the center for each clusters, but you don't have to do that. So the center for a cluster could be totally a random number that is generated in xy axis. But in this example, suppose that we have point 1, 4, and 7 as our initial starting point. These points, as you see, is a part of, are a part of initial data set. And then we also want to use the rectilinear distances to calculate the distance between observations. Now we would like to use k-mean clustering to group these uh, observations. So I'm going to start by calculating the distance of all these eight points from the random initial point that I have selected as the center of each cluster. Remember, point 1, 
point 0.4 and point 0.7 are randomly selected to be the center of the three clusters that we have. Now I have to calculate the distance of each of these points from these uh, centers and fill out this matrix. So one important difference between k-min clustering and hierarchical clustering is that in hierarchical clustering you had to create an 8 by 8 matrix to calculate all the paired distances. But in k-min clustering you just calculate an 8 by 3 matrix in this case uh, that uh, reduces the computational time significantly, especially when you're dealing with uh, really big data sets. So how do I calculate the distance of uh, 2 and 10 from the other observation 210? So this obviously is 0 because the distance from each point from itself is 0. But 2, 2 and 10 from 5 and 8 simply would be the difference between the x values, which is 2 and 5, so you have 3, and the difference between y's, which is 10 and 8, which is 2. So 3 plus 2 is equal to 5. So if I want to show you more formally, as you see, the distance between... 2, 10, and 2, 10 is going to be 2 minus 2, absolute value is 0, 10 minus 10, y is the difference between y's, and you have 0, and the summation is 0. In this case, 2 minus 5, absolute value is 3, 10 minus 8, absolute value is 2, and the total distance is 5. So we calculate all these distances the same way. So for example, 2, 10 from 1, 2, the distance is going to be 9 using the rectilinear equation. Now, how can I identify the cluster for 0.210? I have to look at all these distances and then minimum distance would determine the cluster for this observation. So right now the minimum distance from 210 is from cluster 1, so therefore this point belongs to cluster 1. Let's calculate all these distances and identify the, their clusters. So now in this table I've completed the calculation of all these distances, so any observation here, any value that you see is the difference be uh, between the point that is given here and the center of the cluster. So now we can start allocation of all these clusters. So the closest point to 210 is 210, so this point belongs to cluster 1. If I look at the second row, the closest distance is to cluster 3, so therefore the allocation of cluster to this point would be 3. So if I look at the third row, you see that the closest distance is 7, so we are allocating this observation to the second cluster. Same thing for the next row, and the row after, and the row after. So all these points belong to cluster 2. And you, have, you can fill the rest of this table. If you do that, this is the final clustering allocation that you get. As you see, for example, here, the closest distance is to cluster 3, so this cluster flag will be 3. Now, now we have uh, created the first clustering schema. It means that the first point is going to belong to cluster 1. These points plus the last observation are cluster 2, and point 2 and 7 are cluster 3. I'm going to write down the clustering schema that we have created here. Cluster 1 only includes um, 2 and 1. Cluster 2 is point 3, 4, 5, 6, and 8, and cluster 3 is observation 2 and observation 7. Now the next step is repeating the same thing, but this time we have to update the center of these clusters. Instead of 2, 10, 5, 8, and 1, 2, we, we're going to update the center of each cluster by calculating the cent centroids of each of these clusters. So the centroid for each cluster is simply the average of all the x's and average of all the y's. So in the next slide, we, you see that how we calculate the centroid for each cluster. Here, in cluster 1, we only have one point, so that remains as the center of the cluster. But for cluster 2, we had 5 points. If I take the average of, um, average of x's for those 5 points, it gives me the x for the centroid. And if I take the average of uh, average y's of those points, then I get the y value for the centroid. I do the same thing for cluster 3. We had two observation, average of x and average of y gives me the new centroid. Now we have three new centroids, 210, 6 and 6, 1.5 and 3.5. So what happens next, on the top here you see that I updated the centroids. This time the distance is going to be calculated from each observation to these updated centroids.
and we repeat everything exactly the same way and in the end we see which observation has the closest distance to each cluster and then using that we define the cluster in each observation for example first point has the closest distance to 210 which is the first cluster so the cluster is going to be one the second point the closest distance is to third cluster so that becomes the third cluster this one is second so that becomes the second cluster second cluster second second third and first cluster so in each row you're looking at the minimum distance from the point to center of each cluster and identify the cluster allocation now we have to repeat the previous step one more time we have to find out what are the point within each cluster and update the centroid for each cluster if i do that i see that this time point one and eight are in cluster one i take the average of x and y for point one and eight and this is the new centroid also point three four five and six are in cluster two if i take the average of x and average of y these two becomes the centers for the new cluster 2 and cluster 3 only includes 2 and 7 if you update that you get 1.5 3.5 as a center for these clusters so we repeat this step one more time but this time we again update the center for each cluster calculate the distance of each of these points from these clusters and find the minimum distance from each observation from each cluster and define the cluster schema or cluster allocation if I this time look at the allocation of points to each cluster I see that points 1 4 and 8 are cluster 1 so if I update the centroid this time I get 3.67 and 9 for the first cluster for the second cluster you see 3 5 and 6 belonging to cluster 2 I update the center for the cluster by calculating the average of x and y's you get 7 and 4.3 and point 2 and 7 belong to cluster 3 so if i calculate the average of x and y within each group this is the new centroid that you get now i have to repeat that i update the centers update all the distances and update the cluster allocation so if i do that i see that i exactly get the same allocation that I got last time. It means that point 1, 4, 8 are in cluster 1, point 2 and 7 are in cluster 3, and the rest of the points are in cluster 2. This is ex exactly what we got two slides earlier when we had different set of centroids. So this is a sign that we have to stop the k-min clustering and report the, this as a final result or as the final cluster allocation. The k-min clustering ends when you're clustering method from one step or one iteration to the next one does not change so right now you're in the final allocation it means that point one four and eight in cluster one two and seven cluster three and the rest of the points are in cluster two the centroid for these clusters are given on the top this is an image that kind of shows what just happened throughout the k-min clustering with a visual gra a graph I think these are the eight points that we had at the beginning. Now, what I did, I started putting three points of these observation as the center of my three clusters. I picked A1, A4, and A7. Then what I started uh, doing is started allocating clusters, find out what are the closest one to each observation or each centroid in this case. So if I do that, this was the first iteration that we ran. A1 was cluster 1. This one A2 and 7 cluster 3 and rest of the points were cluster 2. Now then after that, when we updated the centroid, this, these points that are shown by red are the new centroids. So we have to repeat the allocation schema. And after we did that, you see the next two iteration. A1 and 8 fall into the first cluster, 2 and 7 into the third, and the rest into uh, cluster number and when you repeat the uh, the process of finding the centroids and allocating points to the clusters you got to the final iteration which was here and after that when you repeat it your clustering schema didn't change that means that you you're in the final clustering stage and your clusters are formed now you can report your final 
uh, clustering schema, which is 1, 8, and 4 in cluster 1, 2, 7 in cluster 3, 5, 6, and 3 in cluster 2. With that, our lesson in clustering using k-min method has concluded. Please refer to your Blackboard for your assignments. Thank you.